Welcome to the fifth last Don Lane Show. Tonight's Don's guests include Linda Ronstad, Brian Dawes, Paul Marteau, Tim Evans, and our very special guest, the King himself, Graham Kennedy. And now, here's Don. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I knew you were going to be a fun group when I saw you out in the foyer making a Shanghai out of the security guard's truss. <laughs> it was going to be fun. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice. Okay. <laughs> By the way, just to set the record straight, you know, all those jokes that I've made about Channel 10 and Channel 7 over the years, <laughs> I was only joking. You know? <laughs> 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 okay, welcome to the Don Lane Show, Australia's answer to Grenada. <laughs> Can you believe that, America invading Grenada? It's unbelievable. And evidently, the invasion caused a, a great strain in relations between Great Britain and the United States. In fact, I heard today in the press that Margaret Thatcher's blood pressure got so high that she had a blowout in one of her pantyhose. It was a dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now going to tell you the worst joke my writers have ever written for me. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, these Latin Americans are always having revolutions. You ready for this one? Hang on a minute. This is going to be, these Latin Americans are always having revolutions. In fact, there was one today in a little known Latin country called Kichi Kichi. <laughs> the military has taken control of the government in what is being referred to as the Kichi Kichi coup. <laughs> See what I mean? I didn't buy, I'm sorry. Hey, listen, what a night we got for you tonight. It's going to be great, I'm telling you. Graham Kennedy, Linda Ronstadt, and my kids are waiting back there for me because we open the show tonight with Billy Joel's latest hit, Tell Her About It. Okay, Graham, here we go. Right. Tell her See you let a good thing slip away You know I don't like watching anybody Make the same mistakes I made Well she's a real nice girl And she's always there for you But a nice girl wouldn't tell you What you should do Hey listen boy I'm sure that you think You got it all under control You know you don't want somebody Telling you the way to stay in someone's soul you're a big boy now and you'll never let her go That's just the kind of thing she ought to know Tell her about it Tell her everything you feel Give her every reason to accept that you're for real Tell her about it Tell her all your crazy dreams Let her know you need her Let her know Slip away. You know, I don't like watching anybody make the same mistakes I made. Well, she's a real nice girl and she's always there for you. But a nice girl wouldn't tell you what you should do. Listen, boy, it's good information from a man who's made mistakes. You know, a word or two that she gets from you could be the difference that it makes. She's a trusted soul and she's put her trust in you. But a girl like that would tell you what you should do. Tell her about it. Tell her everything you feel. Give her every reason. 
reason to accept that you're for real. Tell her about it. Tell her all your crazy dreams. Let her know you need her. Let her know how much she means. I tell her about it. I said, tell her about it. One more, tell her about it. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you very, very much uh, for that, and I hope you appreciated the kids. They put a lot of work and a lot of time into it. Graham and the boys, thank you very much. Uh, where are we? Oh, I see. More wires, telegrams. We've had, honestly, the, the reaction has been absolutely underwhelming. Uh, we have, <laughs> I want to read you a few more of the wires that we got. Um, this one is from my American agent. He says, don't worry, have booked you at Caesar's Palace for three months. You clean the windows on Mondays and the floors on <laughs> Here's one. Uh, we don't like the news one bit, signed the Australian Taxation Department. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. I mean, if people from all walks of life, right? It says, don't feel bad. They tell us to do the same thing every day. The Australian Taxidermists Association. <laughs> This one is from my manager. He said, I have good news and bad news. The good news is that I've signed you up for another show. The bad news is that the program is called, called uh, In El Salvador Tonight. This one's from Dolly Parton. Nice that she thought of me. She says, now that you have the time, look me up in L.A. and let's play tennis. I like... <laughs> she says, I like doubles. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing at the straight lines, I got problems here. <laughs> this is from a fan. It says, why are you leaving? The show is brilliant and you're fantastic. Uh, P.S. Please excuse the crayon. They won't give me anything sharp in here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, here's one from Alan Bond, a request. He said, could we use you as the mast on Australia 3? Uh, <laughs> Bart Cummings took time out from his racing this time of year, too. It's wonderful. He said, can, can you use another hand in the stables? You've thrown enough of it around. Why not pick some up for a change? <laughs> Even George Burns, old George Burns got in on the party, he said, don't worry, you've got plenty of time left. When I was your age, I still had pimples. <laughs> and last but not least, here's one from the, uh, the Indian Tourist Commission. It said, you and the people of India have one thing in common. We've both got the Khyber. Isn't that nice? <laughs> anyway, those are my wires, all right? Thank you. Well, we'll be back. The King, Graham Kennedy, will be here. Have a good time, I think. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> You're a champion. Oh! Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh. Listen, Frank, I need you initiate the game. I think I'm leaving. I think hold on. You know, when I arrived in Australia in uh, 1965, uh, it was to host The Tonight Show out of Sydney. That's uh, the first ones that I did. Uh, Graham Kennedy was already the toast of Melbourne. 
and his IMTs were the most talked about programs in Victoria. He had yet to conquer the North, but that was only a short time away. Uh, fortunately for me, someone came up with the idea of Graham and I linking up by cable for portions of our programs. You see, we were on on the same night, and uh, we wanted to just link up for small portions of the program, have a good, the results were revolutionary for their time. I mean, people couldn't believe it, we hooked up. And the whole exercise was great fun. Now, here's a vintage 1965 cable hookup with Graham and I singing the same song at the same time, but from different cities. Here, look. Here. 76 trombones <laughs> While 110 cornets plays the way to the rhythm of hatch, hatch, hatch. Oh, the kids began to march, and they're marching still, marching still, marching. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of videotape gone past the recording head since then, but uh, Graham went on to uh, bigger and better national things, and he will always be remembered as the king. Here's Graham Kennedy, here, come on. While you were doing the opening, some more messages have come in. Wires. Oh, it's some more. Uh, yeah. Bob Hawke wants to be in a picture with you before you go. Right. He said. Yes, right yes. My producers rang who did the odd angry shot, and they want us to co-star in a film called The Big Tall Angry Yank. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a nice one. Look on the bright side. You had eight years, four months, and two weeks longer at it than I did, and signed Ted Hamilton. Right. <laughs> and uh, they're coming in. The board is jammed. Yes, is it? Yes, yes. They keep rolling in like this. You know, it's amazing. And Barry Crocker wants to buy all your old clothes, if that's right. right. Yes. <laughs> How about that? Looking at that videotape, is that something or not? That's, uh... I think that's amazing. I didn't know I could reach uh, those kind of notes, Don. I didn't realize. I swear to you, till this very minute, looking at that tape, that you took the high note on the end of that. I did. Yes, I amazing. Did. I remember us walking. Pardon the expression. Nothing to read into anything here, but. We were walking arm in arm one night, slightly tipsy through the streets of Melbourne, singing that song. Uh, I think we did. Yes, we did. So, <laughs> how could it have been, though, that you were tipsy? Uh, because was, you, were... you were a very bad influence in those early days. Did uh, you have a sip in those days? Yes, sometimes, yes. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Tell me about... You just did a movie called Stanley. Oh, yes, I, like I did. Do Sounds a like a Jerry Lewis movie. You know, Stanley. Oh, I wish it was a Jerry Lewis movie. It's not... No, no it's not. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm in this one. Um, <laughs> the, I'm, I can't actually rave about it. I, although the producer has some uh, figures. You know, they, they don't just put a, a film on anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets marketed market tested and they play it to an audience very similar to this one or not as nice and um, <laughs> that's really the secret yeah. and uh, <laughs> they play it to an audience and the audience fills in the forms and says all sorts of things and then they come back to you and my producer the producer of Stanley has a lot of evidence to suggest that it's a very very adequate uh, <laughs> motion picture <laughs> like you get figures like 91 percent were still breathing at the end right yes. <laughs> 82% didn't vomit. <laughs> All kinds of good stuff. Have like you that. ever been into one of those uh, market testing? When we had the show go to the to the States, they had a market testing thing there with people, but they pushed buttons or something. And no, I've never I've never done one of those, but I've been in a few programs and uh, films where they I've had that done to me. Stanley <laughs> uh, Stanley is uh, the story of a uh, a rich boy who uh, his parents think is not 
quite all there, mm. and uh, in, a, in desperation to become normal, he goes to the computer to find the most normal family in Australia and the information comes out the Norris family and that's us. I'm Norm Norris, my wife is Doris and we have a son Morris. Morris Norris. <laughs> Doris Norris. Doris Norris. Norm Norris and a, and a girl called Patty. I don't know how she got it. <laughs> so he comes and lives with us. Stanley, played by Peter Bensley, comes and stays Wasn't with there us. supposed to be somebody else play that? I thought I read... Originally it was to be Tom Conti and then it, uh, then it became uh, Peter. Right. And uh, he comes to live with us and finds out that the Norris family is anything else but normal. I see. I, we, I won't... I, to, to go into it further, Don, would don't be, we have to, a clip of would this, be to make sure that no one went. Right. No, um, no, 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 no. We do have a clip. Please don't applaud. Do you hate that when people bring on their, their clips and it's not very good, or, I mean, it doesn't mean too much because you can't get very much through in the time given to you on a television show, and mm. the, at the end the audience go wild, yeah. and don't do that. Uh, <laughs> what, what is the clip about? Are we going to look? Do you, you know what the clip is? Um, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Um, yes, uh, Stanley has come to live with the Norrises, and I've told him I'm a bit of a... Uh, no, to, to tell you that would be wrong, too. <laughs> I, I'm a bit... Uh, you did do this movie, didn't you? Yes. Yes. Right, yeah, right. I'm, a, I'm a little uh, shaky in certain preferences. And uh, <laughs> I... Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to, to talk uh, 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 Stanley into... Uh, uh, I'm trying to give him some education of what to do when it comes to the opposite sex. OK. It's a Stanley. I don't know how Happy lost his head. Happy who? It wasn't me! Here. Oh, look. Oh, look. Congratulations, Stan. Thanks, Norm. Man needs a car. Any knocks or rattles? Uh, she seems pretty smooth. Oh, it'd be lovely as a two-tone. Mauve and green, maybe. Good idea. I'll wash it for you, Stanley. Uh, Two dollars? Fifty? Uh, it's a deal. I'll wax and polish it for you for ten. Never mind about the car. It's time to grate the carrots. Two for a dollar, Mum. And stand to the, uh... to the seats lay back. Yes, they do, Norm. <laughs> You'll be right with the girls now. All you need's the flowers and the chocolates. I always recommend roses. They open up later on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey? Hey? <laughs> and as far as chocolates are concerned, hard centres are the best. That's the right idea. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Certainly do, Norm. <laughs> oh, it's a funny thing, Stan, isn't it? Sex? <laughs> yeah. We'll have a man-to-man -man about it sometime. I'd like that, Norm. Anytime you like. That's terrific. That's good. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you talking about? That's great. You talk about market testing you know, with three lines. You got three laughs. What this more is, do you this want? This is true. No, perhaps yeah. it's better than I think. Yes. <laughs> you did. You didn't stop there, though. This movie career of yours is bursting out all over. There was uh, what's Killing Fields? Is that the other one? The Killing Fields for David Putnam was the most uh, amazing experience. Uh, when did you do this one? This was June, July of uh, May, June, July of this year. Shot in Thailand, uh, and it's a true story of the fall of uh, Kampuchea uh. in 1975, something I didn't know a great deal about. And it was very sad to do because, well, that was immense and there were thousands of people. We used real Cambodian people who had escaped and gone to America uh, after all this torture and these unspeakable atrocities and were brought back and they had to act it again mm. in, uh, in circumstances that were... Uh, physically very similar to where it happened in the first place. So it was very upsetting for them to go through it and, of course, upsetting for us to see them going through it. That's mm. called The Killing Fields, and I think that's a release from Warner Brothers next year. You had some trouble with the scene in that or something, did they? They had to do something over and over again, which was a little revolting. Oh, I mean, I don't, don't want to go into it in case I'm wrong. You don't even... I don't think we have time for that. There is, a, there is a terrible moment in it for me, which was never in the script, but a lot of the stuff we did was never written hmm. and uh, when I got there to do it I thought I was in ten scenes I eventually left 
after doing about 38 scenes. Oh. A lot of improvised stuff went in, but there was a, an awful moment when we're locked in the French embassy in Phnom Penh together with the other refugees, and uh, we're running out of food. We've been living on boiled rice. And the Khmer Rouge arrive and deliver two dead pigs uh, to us. And uh, Bill Patterson, the actor, and I, who were in this scene as the army delivered it, which took three days to do, yeah. uh, he said, is this lunch? And I said, I don't know whether it's lunch. It could be our future. Then we go upstairs <laughs> to the refugees. We ask for two volunteers to come down and help us with the pigs. And then we cut the pigs up while it's raining. Now, in actual screen time, that could be a minute and a half. It took six days. Oh it was the God. most awful thing I've... <laughs> because we used the same dead pigs, you oh, see. Oh, wonderful. That's <laughs> terrific, yeah. And it wasn't with an axe like it said in the script. They gave me a little bayonet. So, in order to do it, you've got to get fairly close to it. And this is the largest dead pig I've ever seen. And do you know what happens when you do that to a pig? A lot of things come out. <laughs> Not very nice things no. come out. <laughs> and there I was for five, truth, five days we did it. It was just terrible. It was funny. Like you said, though, it was a minute and a half seat, and it takes you all that time. That's People right. never take it. Let, let's talk about here, okay? Mm. Your old stomping grounds here. Now, I'm leaving here now. This is my first time out of here. You've left here how many? Three times. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was the first? Tell me the first. One of the most delightful things that's ever going to happen in, in your life is about to happen to you now. Yeah. Because it's lovely to join here, but it is tremendous to leave the joint. <laughs> no, not true. It is. I've, I've done it three times. In 1969, <laughs> after, after 13 years, I, right. I left for a couple of years. Then I did the 72-73 season, left for another year. Mm -hmm. And then I did some of the 1975 season and left again. And it gets better each time, the leaving, I mean. Yeah, what, did they give you a big send-off the first time? I mean, first time was fascinating. There might be some viewers old enough to remember. 13 years I had done, a lot of that five nights a week. And yeah. yes, they gave me a, a crown. A little imitation uh, <laughs> crown. After 13 years, yes. were there real jewels in it or anything? Or? No, it was a sort of imitation, a uh, theatrical crown, which I regard with great respect. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, <laughs> where, where is it now? This in the, in the lavatory. That's right. <laughs> Right, right by the throne. No, but yes, because you can lift it up in the paper. You right. Know, <laughs> No, actually, it was a very nice crowd. But I'm just wondering what you'll get, Don, because you haven't done 13 years. Uh, I've already got it. Uh, Have you really? Yes. <laughs> they gave it to me eight weeks ago, and that's it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> right, no, but what about the second time now? The second time was uh, oh, second your time... choice or their choice? Well, all no, of these times were your choice, weren't they? The three times were my choice, but in the last time, there was a, it was a bit each <laughs> toss up. It was a toss up. Yeah. But no, the, both, uh, both times I wanted to have a holiday, especially after the 13-year burst. That was a mm. long time. And uh, so I, I uh, said goodbye and then came back and did part of 72, all of 73, and that's all I wanted to do. And, uh, Were there any of the same executives here the second time as was here the first time? Uh, yes, I would think. Uh, you, see, you must remember, Don, that, you know, on this network, the executives, by and large, and a few of them are, uh, <laughs> we're uh, a pretty nice group of people. It's the wives you've got to watch. Oh, right. There's, there's a couple of lady dogs there, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we got, I, they, they're sort of giving me all sorts of funny signals here. But one, Should I go? No, no, not yet. Tell me about the crow call. Now, a lot of people think that you went off the air because of the crow call, and that's oh, not the no, truth. No, that's you not true. Go. I mean, even no, though no. they named the building after you, you're the only one I ever know has a, has a, a, a room named uh, after you. That's right, called yeah. the Ark. Ark, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> See how panicked everybody got now? That's it. Rosemary Morgan was doing a, uh, a Seedle commercial. It was going on, as, uh, as they were wont to do. And, yes. <laughs> and I used to do a little bird thing. I go, underneath mm. and this night and we'd done the crow before but on this particular night i don't know perhaps i was closer perhaps perhaps colin stevenson had finally conquered the audio business right yes. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the boys <laughs> and it, it was it was a very clear one yes south australia wet themselves right yes. <laughs> uh, so and the outcome of that was 
we pre-recorded the show, which I rather loved because I remember being in New York watching Jack Parr and Johnny Carson and Steve Allen, and they used to boast about the fact that the program was recorded, uh, pre-recorded earlier in the evening. Of course, they'd go home and watch it. And yeah. thought, That's a big deal. I'd love to do yeah. that. Record the thing, go back to Frankston, watch myself. Or if it was not too good, not watch myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all. That's what happened there. And the program went on, went on for some time after that. Before you got thrown off. But of course, they attributed to that, I suppose. Listen, let me, let me, let's bring out somebody who's close to you and close to me. I mean, this is the, this is the catalyst, I think, with you and I, actually. Really? Yeah, well, it looks like cattle. No, catalyst is it. It's... <laughs> How about a hand? Bert Newton, everybody. Hi, Here you go. How's he taking it? Oh, very well. You very well. Oh, a lot of courage. Is it? Oh, a lot of fire, a lot of guts. It, it, the, he probably wouldn't take a cut. Oh, no, nothing like that. Oh, no, no when, when, like when, when, uh, when Brisbane and Perth dropped the show, didn't they say... No, no, they didn't... Sevens less. No, they didn't drop the show. They rested the show just for a season. Oh, did they? Hmm. Oh, that's... oh Herbie. What? Oh, I... Oh, I'm so it? glad. Your tablets, I... what? No, no, not the tablets. You <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I had a message for you. Yeah. I, I was looking for you before the show and I couldn't find you. I think you were having some more hairs sewn on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you should try it. It's <laughs> One of the nice things about visiting the Don Lane show is, you know, the, the fun of just picking the people with the real hair. <laughs> so, um, it's a way of life down here, oh, isn't it? Of course. It? So, and this man, there was a phone call. And he wants you, it's a leading Australian magazine, mm -hmm. and he wants to know, he's going to pay a lot of money, he wants to know if he could use you in their centrefold nude. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> I'd love, what magazine? The Australian Pensioner. No, <laughs> you haven't changed. You have not changed no, in 25 years. This is not true. We're having a nice little chat, but all of a sudden you're rude to me. I'm not, I didn't. Did you say, did you or did you not say, the Australian pensioner? That's about the size of it. No, stop. <laughs> Get him. What? Get him. Whom? The executive producer. But he's not. Yes, he still works here. Does he? Yes. <laughs> he's behind the set there. Are you sure? I think the glasses are there. The one with the glasses? Yes, that's right. The American producer from I don't the... think he works I'm here. Look, if you go up there, I'm sure you'll find him. Really? He speaks like Mr. McGoo, remember him? No. Okay, go on. Go, just go and see if he's there. I wish you'd The executive like producer. The, 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 over over oh, there. Oh. Right. My God, he forgets easily. <laughs> see if he's there. Are you there, EP? <laughs> EP? <laughs> yes? Oh, look, <laughs> look very carefully. Like no, don't go yet. He's a short man. Oh, oh there he is. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Nice Newton, to see ya. Nice. The executive producer. <laughs> Remember the executive producer, Don? I've seen him. I've seen him before. Yeah. What a grand little performer Don, he is. Don, yes, indeed. No, the little blonde fella. Yes, he's very, very oh, good. Yeah, very They'd good. have to pay him millions. Yeah, and I don't think he'd be interested. No, no. But they might have a go. Sure, yeah. Oh, the boy. reason that... He wouldn't come back for 20 million. Yeah, right. <coughs> uh, EP... And I don't think he'd want to. He's a clever little fella. Of course he what is, What a yes. brilliant ray of talent. You, wonderful that brain. Wonderful fella. brain. What I, I'd like to talk to you, not me, do you? Uh, Bert Boy, Newton, never me, Bert Newton. Never, never yeah, nice, nice to see you again. Uh, uh, EP, he was very, very rude to me once again. Not the little blonde. The little bloke with the Dolly Parton eyes. He was very, very rude to me. Very rude. He's a clever little bloke. He's very fella. clever, but he was very rude to me. He said dreadful things. Terrible well, things. What, what did he say? Well, he... He talked about a certain strategic area of my body. And what did he say about it? He said that it wouldn't be suitable for photographing, and I'm, I'm very, very hurt. He said that? Yes, about a certain area of my body. And he said that about you? Yes, he did. He said that. That's about the size of it. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll have a talk to him, uh, Mr. Newton, because... Uh... He shouldn't say that, but he's a clever little performer. Well, I've always liked him, but tonight he just went too far. It would cost millions to get him back. I think you've mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you promise? I'll have a word to him, okay. and I'll make sure he doesn't do it again. And nice seeing Very you again. Very nice seeing the you The executive again. producer, yes, wonderful ah! man. Oh, what? Mr. Newton. You know those uh, photographs you gave me to look at of yes. you in the, uh, in the nude? Yeah. 
for the centerfold. <laughs> I gave them back, but I didn't give everything you gave to me back. So I have something for you. What have you got for me? <laughs> the magnifying glass. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> get up, get up, out of here immediately. <laughs> Graham Kennedy, everybody, give that. Come on. Graham Kennedy. We'll be back. Take a look at this. It looks like a little makeup case or something. Yeah, it, it yeah. does. But, Don, it's not. It's the new Canon professional copier. And it's called... Personal, personal copier. What did I say? Professional copier. Well, it's professional, too. But it's a personal copier. And also, copier, it's a right. personal one, too. That's and it's right. called the PC-10. Uh, uh, and it will copy anything... <laughs> and I can't see I'm anymore. I'm distracting you. I I'm cannot not see anymore. <laughs> it will copy anything in blue, brown, and I think black. We mean, it's a copier like they have in offices in, uh, in instant print shops. Yes, that's, that's it. Right. That's right, Don. It's Big Brother for the PC-20, but this one is small. Look, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, and look, Bert, I could use one at home when I'm writing my memoirs, couldn't I? Yeah, certainly. Well, Why it, not? Is it expensive? Uh, not expensive at all. Uh, no, no. You can buy it for the special price of 9000 I beg your pardon. $995. The special price of $995. $995. Or you can lease it for about $700 a week. No, $7 uh, a seven week. Seven dollars. I'm sorry. I say anyone can use it, like a, a restaurateur to make up menus, perhaps, yes. or a guy yeah. that owns a garage, maybe he wants good to idea. whatever the things Very are. Yeah, good that idea. would be good. Or right? even Patty for copying, perhaps, recipes that she gets asked for, you fools. <laughs> never, 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 never in nine right. Look at this, we can copy you in, in brown. Put that brown paper, here, see there's a, look. What have you got there? You take this, there's this picture of you, here, oh, see? Yeah, yeah. And you slip that down in there Let's, like this. Did we see the check. picture? Yeah, sure. There's the, there's the picture there. Yeah, there's the picture of Bert. Right. They want another look at the picture? No, that's okay. Right. Now yeah. I get a piece of brown paper like this. Yep, yeah, just slip it right in there. Slip it in there. It comes out this end over here. Hang like on this. a sec. I'm slipping it in there. Right. It's not moving, Don. Oh, yes. Yes, yes it, is. it is. Even you can't muck this up. Yes, <laughs> this is amazing. Right. This is a great little copier. And look at this. Here you are. In oh, brown. Don't there you go. Well, look at it. Why? And so realistic. That's right. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna kill Crystal. I'll kill you. Right. Or at least All near right. death. <laughs> Look, it's, this is such a great little copy of anyone can use it in their business, on their business, at their business, above their business, or below their business. And also, it's terrific for home for all sorts of. Uh, Things. It's the Canon personal copier. It needs no servicing except the change of cartridge, like you know, like changing the film in your camera. And, and like for instance, this one here, you can you can mark up how many you want. Like for instance, this is a set for 19 copies. You push that green button, 19 copies come out. See? And very quickly. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Hang on. This one, of course, is a bit more expensive than that one. But here they come. Look at this. 19 at a time. And all with your best side oh, on it. Oh, thank too. you very that, much. That's, that's very, very, very kind. Well, there's 18 more coming. You want to hang around and with this? No, no, thank you. Don't you. Have to. As up. you can <laughs> see, anyone can use it. If we can use it, certainly you can too. Okay. Thanks, Bert. There thank you, go. Don. <laughs> see you soon. <laughs> thank you. It, uh, it certainly was a great se it was great seeing Graham again. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, longevity in the business, Carl Joy is here with us now. He's celebrating 25 years in the business this year, okay? This guy just never seems to wane. Tonight he's singing his new single. It's called Really In Love. Make him welcome. Carl Joy, yeah, come on. Just another way of making me stay Just another fantasy Are you really in love? Really in love? Are you really in love for sure? Does it really mean something new to you now? And not just coming back for more I want to know right now I'm in love I'm in love with you, baby Won't you tell me about it? Cause I wanna know right now 
Can't you see? Can't you see? You are everything to me. And I can help us. If only I just knew how. And this time it's love. Real love now, darling. This time it's love. Joy at his singing best. Linda Ronstadt is arguably the most successful female pop singer of all time. Now, some might say she's also the most controversial, but putting that aside for a moment, there's hardly an area of music that hasn't been explored and conquered by this queen of pop. Uh, even Gilbert and Sullivan recently succumbed to the Ronstadt magic when she received raves for her performance in the Pirates of Penzance. Her latest effort is a highly acclaimed big selling album, this one here, called What's New? And the music is arranged by Nelson Riddle, the 62-year-old maestro who created all those velvety sounds for Frank Sinatra 25 or 30 years ago. And some of those songs are on this album. It's a highly unlikely combination, Ron Stat and Riddle, but an unqualified success. Now here's a track, in fact the title track from this album, showing her new style. Ronstadt. That's the new track from her album. Boy, I'll tell you, does that, that kind of music conjures up some memories for me. Would you greet from Los Angeles, please, Linda Ronstadt, the one the only one the original. There it is. <laughs> Hi. Hi. 
Ah, yes. So lovely down here. <laughs> Linda, uh, welcome to Australia, even if it is by satellite. You've been here live, I know, but uh, uh, we have to settle for this way, and I am pleased that you had the time to join us. Tell me about that album now. Um, this is certainly a long way from rock and a big departure for Linda Ronstadt. How come you sound so controversial? What? <laughs> is that controversial? I didn't know that I was so controversial. <laughs> Well, I'm talking about that. Well, I don't want to get onto that subject yet, but I will oh, okay. if we want to get onto it in a little while. No. no, okay. I don't know which subject that is, but at any rate, go ahead. All right. Well, tell me about the album now. It's a departure I'll from rock. I'll ask you rock. later. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a departure. Yes, it is. Um, gee, I don't know what to say. I, I just I love the songs. I've I've known most of them. I've known all my life, and I I just wanted to sing them very badly, and it it kept seeming like there was no particular market for me to sing them to. Uh, and people kept saying, oh, you're a rock and roll singer, why do you want to sing that? But I finally just realized, why not? You know, I might as well. Mm. I've made all these albums and, and they've had, you know, varying degrees of success, so I, I didn't feel like it was being exactly self-indulgent to do it. You know, they're, they're good songs that have sort of proven themselves over, over time. You used to so listen to this. So I just decided this, to do it. They t uh, from what I understand, you used to listen to this kind of music with your ear pressed to a radio when you were a little girl in Tucson. Uh, I didn't listen to this kind of music with my ears pressed to the radio. I listened to rock and roll with my ear pressed to the radio. Uh -huh. I listened to this kind of music with my ear pressed to the phonograph machine because my father had a lot of these records. And um, they, still, they still played some of this stuff on the radio when I was little. But I was born in 1946, so by the time I was really listening hard to the radio, which was about 1950, uh -huh. 1952, rock and roll was starting to crop up a little bit. Mm. Uh, how, and, how did you... How'd you get along with Nelson Riddle? Uh, was it, was uh, there any concern when you first went in to do it? None. I mean, I, I mean, my only concern was whether he would say, are you kidding, and slam down the phone when I called him up. Because uh, he's not known to have a great deal of fondness for rock and roll. So I figured he might think I was some rock and roll upstart that he wasn't interested in working with. But as it turns out, he was very interested in working with me. And when our first meeting was just an incredible success. I mean, we just adored each other right away. And uh, when I gave him the list of tunes that I wanted to do, he was just, he was real excited about it. We ran to the piano <laughs> like two little kids and we started fooling around with arrangements, you know. So it was just great. Ah, he, he, does he, uh, uh, do you work with him now in your live performances? Oh yes, he comes and conducts the orchestra for me. And he's a lovely man, you know, he has a wonderfully sardonic sense of humor, extremely bright, very articulate. Uh, you know, just he's just a neat guy, full of wonderful stories too. He knows some good stories. Let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> he must. He's have. got all the, he's got all the dish from you know the 40s and 30s. Oh boy, I'd love to hear that myself and sometime. 50s. Uh, you went. To, you were, was Nelson Riddle with you when you uh, worked at Radio City Music Hall? I bring Radio City Music Hall up because the only uh, time I heard of an act going in there was our own Peter Allen, who was talking about. Uh, going in and doing the show, and now all of a sudden I read about Linda Ronstadt going in. I mean, we're a great distance away, so I wasn't aware that you had done it. It must have been exciting, Radio City Music Hall. It was very exciting, especially because of the fact that we weren't allowed to rehearse the show, and there were a lot of moves in it. You know, it had a lot of stage moves. You know, Radio City's a very complicated place. It's all operated with hydraulics. Half the stage will go up, you know, four or five stories. The, mm -hmm. the orchestra was on a great big trolley that moved out of a pit, and up above, behind me. I mean, it was amazing. It was I was afraid? I, I was afraid I was going to get hit by half the stage half the time. You know, it would have been like getting hit by a train. Yeah. But um, but it was really fun, and the audience was great, and they really liked it. So, it, it was great. Linda, we were looking at that uh, film clip just now. Uh, the realization sort of hit me. Uh, not only do you have to go into a studio now and put in all of that time and doing a recording, but once you finish the recording, I guess the rest of your work has just. Uh, isn't even over. The big work has begun. You have to go and then do film clips now. Do videos. I yeah. know, but you know, I thought about videos from the very first when I was, the very first time I heard the playback of, of, of the orchestrated version of What's New, which was the first thing that we recorded. It just sounded, because Nelson has worked so much in, in film and a lot of his stuff really sounds like, he really paints, uh, you know, scenery, sound scenery behind, behind the songs. They're ve his arrangements are very visual to me. Mm. And they're very evocative on a visual level. So I wanted, I was just real keen on making, uh, making, making videos from this as soon as I started listening to what the arrangement sounded like. The, uh, when we talked about being controversial before, what I meant was that I felt there was an unfair emphasis towards wild parties and uh, flings with drugs and things like that. 
that were reported about with Linda Ronstadt. And in ensuing interviews I have read, you have denied that. You have said that, that it's overly exaggerated and a beat up by the media. Now, that's what well, I meant by know, controversy. I don't think I've ever been to a wild party. I hardly ever go to parties to start with. I'm not, I don't, I'm not very social. I don't like parties very much. But I mean, the idea of a wild party is funny. Yeah. I'm about as conservative as they come. Not politically conservative, but in my life, I'm very conservative. <laughs> <laughs> but why, why did the media want to beat that thing up like that? That's the thing that bothered me. Uh... Because they have to have something to write about. You know, it's the old idea, if there's no news that day, make some up. Yeah. And, for some reason, they got an idea that I would, I would be good media hype. I don't know why. You know, it's sort of like, I met Jackie Onassis one time, who was a very, very charming lady. And I, after talking to her, I realized that she had never done an interview since her husband was killed. Wow. You know, in all these 20 years, whatever it's been since he was, he's dead, she never really done an interview. So you have to consider that every single word that's been printed about her since then, and you read about stuff about her every day, it's been, some, it's been conjecture mm. or flat out fabrication you know so people make stuff up all the time i don't go you know i don't go yeah. to parties and it's also funny how the the written word also can be construed the way the person that's reading it wants to construe it as as opposed to the spoken word i mean when you speak and say something people understand what you mean but when they read it they can read their own re uh, their own interpretation into it it's also a continual source of amazement to me that people actually believe it i don't believe much of anything i read anymore the press the press have have uh, been so irresponsible that they have destroyed their own credibility to a great degree mm. but it's amazing to me that people read you know stuff in people magazine or the national Enquirer. your press down there is really i mean you gave us rupert murdoch <laughs> Ugh, the most horrible man in the world thanks a lot no you're american i forgot yeah, no i've been here australia 18 years. gave us rupert murdoch thanks a lot you guys take him back <laughs> you don't need him here i've got well you know, when you get those, he's the king of the rags, actually. Uh, <laughs> he's very irresponsible, too, you know. I mean, I mean, you see, you see these screaming headlines in his newspapers that, about politics or about a shooting or a killing that are only made to inflame, you know, terror and horror. And it, 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 it drives me crazy. It's just, it's plain all irresponsible. That's all it is, you know. Yeah, good on you, Uncle. It's, ba it's, bad for the, it's bad for journalism. It's bad for journalism. It's bad for the responsible journalists that are out there trying to do their job, you know. Did you have much of a problem uh, when you were with Jerry Brown, people expecting you to have uh, political views uh, along the lines of, uh, of Governor Brown's uh, or expecting you to expound political views, whereas, I mean, you're a our singer, he's a politician. Our relationship was completely personal. It wasn't political at all. So, you know, he did politics, I did music. Right. It's, it's easy to separate that. <laughs> now, tell me about the Pirates of Penzance. There was another departure. I mean, nobody in the world would have expected that it was going to be, you were going to get as terrific reviews as you did. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of them probably were licking their chops saying, oh, we'll nail her now, you know. But uh, it must have been a great experience. It was a wonderful experience. People don't realize when somebody's a singer that through all their whole life they'd you know, I was a singer when I was two, as far as I was concerned. That's all I liked was music, and I, wa I walked around singing all the time. And I was real interested in lots of different kinds of music, and people don't realize that most singers, if you pin them down, if you, if you put Mitt Jagger into a corner and asked him about all the different kinds of music that he knew about, you'd be probably amazed to know, find out that he knew about Balinese gong music or something. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I mean, he, yeah. he's amazingly, you know, uh, knowledgeable and has very Catholic uh, taste in music. And, and most music, musicians are like that, you know. You'll find out that they know a lot about, you know, uh, I don't know, Irish uh, traditional music or Eskimo music, whatever. Mm. And it's just all this stuff that you hear all the, your life when you're growing up just goes into your head. And you can reach into that, that, that it's a, becomes a resource, you know, that you can, you can draw from mm. at different parts of your life. Yeah, you're interested in all sorts of music, of course, the, the way you speak. You went to South Africa recently. Uh, two questions here. Did you receive criticism for going to South Africa? And secondly... I understand you were quite impressed by the music that you heard there. I was very impressed with the music that I, was heard, that I heard there. You know, it's amazing. Uh, very, I, it was, made, had very little impact here in the United States. About the only uh, people that even raised an eyebrow were uh, Rolling Stone, which I considered the height of hypocrisy since they don't turn down any of their advertising subscribers, you know, uh, that have companies, you know, Revlon, a lot of other companies that have that are located down in South Africa. Uh. To me, I mean, and they, they screamed and hollered about the money. I mean, I didn't get paid any more for going there than I get paid for going to the United States. And I would certainly expect to be paid for flying 80 hours, mm -hmm. you know, to, to go all the way down to Africa. As far as I was concerned, it was just a gig. I don't think that if you disagree with the policies of 
of the government, which I do very definitely disagree with the policies of the South African government. I don't think that's enough of a reason not to go and play music there. If I if I did that, I wouldn't be able to play in the United States because I don't agree with their policies about nuclear power or nuclear warfare or invading, uh, you know, Grenada or their hopes to invade Nicaragua. I hope they don't do that. I mean, my God, we've got this person running the country, you know, that I completely disagree with. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I have to stop playing concerts in the United States. And if I didn't play, if I decided that I wasn't going to play where attitudes of racism pre prevailed, I certainly couldn't play in Australia or England or uh, lots of places in the United States, a lot, a lot of places in the American South, or Boston, which is extremely racist. Uh. You know, they're having all the controversy about busing. So where do you draw the line? And if it was, if it was some place where the government was terrible to black people, I couldn't go to Uganda. You know, if I wanted to go to Uganda or Tanzania, which has more political prisoners than South Africa, uh, nobody would raise an eyebrow. They just sort of go, "Oh my goodness, she's going to Tanzania." Or if I wanted to go to Russia, which is a fascist, repressive <laughs> government, people would say, "Oh, she's trying to communicate." You know, I went to South Africa. It has a fascist, repressive government. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in the culture down there. And to me, it was an incredible opportunity to learn, to hear some. I heard found I heard some great Zulu music down there, which is incredible. I heard that band Jaluka, which is a great band. Uh huh. And, well, uh, see, you just, it, you just got finished talking. You say, why does anyone think I'm controversial? Do you realize what you've just talked about here? We've just received all your political views in one blow. I'm, not, I'm teasing. I'm not putting it down, honestly. Not very con my con my, I don't think my political views are very controversial. Who, who likes nuclear warfare? You know? yeah, that's true. I agree. And who likes well, racism? People say you're more secure now than you used to be. Do you feel that way? No, I think I'm just about all, like I've always been. <laughs> it's just that, I mean, they, I'm telling you, people make stuff up. I mean, women's magazines come and interview me, and they ask me, you know, this and that and the other thing, and I answer. Then they go off and they write exactly, you know, they write me as this lonely, miserable, wretched person, which is not true. I have a real nice family. I've got lots of friends. We have a whoopee good time. I have my share of troubles, just like everybody else does, right. but, you know, I wouldn't be normal if I didn't. What's the next project, Linda? My next project, well, I'd like to make another album with Nelson. There, there's so many good songs that I left sort of untouched um, in selecting tunes for this album. And also there's something that I've always wanted to do, which is make an, a Latin album, all in Spanish, because uh, uh, my, I've, I come from a Mexican family. My father Mexican -German. had a great influence on me. Mexican-German, yeah. Right, but yeah. my father sang more in Spanish than he did in English, you know, and I learned a lot of songs in Spanish. And uh, I just feel like, I don't know, the whole Latin thing is just so important right now, the relationship of the United States to Latin America, which has always been a disaster. Uh -huh. And it's something I'd like to learn more about. And it's, it's, I've just always wanted to sing that music. I love that music. I think it, in some ways it's the future of pop music, Latin music. Mm -hmm. Linda, I've, I've, uh, they've given me the signal here that I have to leave. I really don't want to. I'm having the best time listening to you. It's been terrific. Really nice. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. I for wish I could see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe someday. I'll have someone describe you. <laughs> maybe someday we'll meet face to face. You never know. I, I thank you very, very much for joining us. And really, good luck with the album. It's some of my favorite music from a favorite uh, era. And uh, it's wonderful to hear someone like yourself doing it. Just terrific. And I'm really glad you like it. Okay, congratulations. And, uh, and we'll see you soon, I'm sure, someplace, sometime. Thank you very much for joining us. Linda Ronstadt, everybody. Thank you. All right, well, thank you. It's too bad she's not controversial. We're going to have some comics coming up for you. Brian Doyle, Paul Martell, Tim Evans, going to have some laughs. Hang on, we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. I just can't get over that. Why do you say I'm controversial? <laughs> One question. It's like a lighting a fuse, right? She was off. Um, I want you, these, these three fellas who over the year have given us a great deal of pleasure, uh, both to our viewers and to me. Uh, they're my comedic mates, uh, fellas that I have a great deal of respect for, comedians uh, that they, they, it's the way they make their living. Brian Doyle, 
Paul Martel, and Tim Evans, of course, who also writes for me as well as being a comic in his own right. I just wanted to have a little chat with them, thank them for coming in, maybe have a couple of laughs too, okay? How about a greeting? Brian, Paul, and Tim, you got it. Really nice to see you guys. Usually you'd march through the curtain, go out and do four or five minutes, and then I don't see you. Well, I see you after, of course, because you go where the booze is, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, tell me, let's, let's talk about uh, being a comedian for a minute, okay? What, what's the toughest, uh, the toughest part of being a comic? I'll just throw it up for grabs, and you tell me what, whoever wants to answer. Yeah. Well, I suppose this year the toughest part is the fact that next year I won't be doing the Don Lane show. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I think that the toughest part is coming home at three in the morning, convincing your neighbors you've got an honest job. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when, you, when you've done a bad show, I've got three kids under ten. When well, I've done a bad show, and I'm really bad. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't been, you, you know. Most nights. Yeah. <laughs> and I wake up my three at three in the morning, yeah. and I wake them up and I say, do what your father's got to do to earn a quid of you. And they, they don't get fed for a week then. Is that so right? I, <laughs> so all I do is appeal to the people outside now, when you see me, just remember my children not being fed for a week. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Paul? What's the toughest part for you being a comic? Having to follow him. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you do a bad show, somebody once said, he was very funny, I think it might have been me, he said, um, <laughs> <laughs> he said, I've never done a bad show in my life, but I've worked in front of a lot of bad audiences. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> And a couple of weeks ago, I worked in front of an audience, and they were a combination of the cast from Deliverance and God's Waiting Room. You know, there was a lot of yeah. sheep running around with sunglasses, you know? And uh, <laughs> it was a bad room. And after you sort of die, you've got to walk through the audience and go up to the manager and get your money. And it's right. normally somebody that looks like Darth Vader, you know? That, yeah, right. <laughs> That's, I guess that's What it. about you, Tim? I think probably the hardest thing, Don, is when you crack it for a really tough audience, you know, uh, like, like if you're working uh, <laughs> Jerusalem on Good Friday or something like yeah, that, right, you know, yeah. where they, and, and the audience just is not picking up anything at all that you're doing. You've got to put up with that, and like a singer can just get up and walk off. But if you're a comic, some way you've got to make them laugh somewhere along there and get a laugh out of them. And that Have you is tried the... having a heart attack? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I always, that's why I always like to do comedy and songs in my act. I figure if they're not laughing, I'll sing. Exactly. <laughs> then they laugh at the singer. What, yeah, right? <laughs> what about hecklers? Now, that's always a terrible, terrible time for comics because it can interrupt your time. I always say it's easy for somebody to get a laugh during someone else's act if they're from an audience because they upset your timing and sure. throw it off balance. Yeah. You know, it's the easiest thing in the world that they always think they're clever and stuff. What do you do about hecklers? I, I never answer a heckler back. <laughs> I, I just find out who they are and my three brothers blow up their house. Right. <laughs> Well, what about you? Uh, I do a lot of impressions in the show, and uh, the other week in Adelaide, a heckler shut it. He's drunk. He says, "Can you do Don Lane?" I said, "No, but I can do Rin Tin Tin, and you're going to be the tree." You know. Is there <laughs> Yeah. Well, I always work on the theory that you got to get a heckler because uh, even Christ didn't please everybody, and he was perfect. So what hope have we got? You yeah, know. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I use one where I'll let him go about two or three minutes, and then I just say, "Well, I remember back in Texas as a little boy when we lived on the farm, and we had this jackass, and I used to tease that jackass and throw rocks at it, and my dad said, "Son." Someday that jackass is going to come back and haunt you. And you know, I never believed him till now. <laughs> okay, the reason we got you three guys out here, we thought we'd have a little chat and have some... Were you, going to, were you just going to say something? I was just going to be honest and say what I really say to a heckler. What do you say to him? I say if there's an engineer in the hall that wants to build a dickhead, there's a blueprint sitting down there. Right. <laughs> You're not allowed to say blueprint on That's television. Right. You can't say that anymore. Have you changed your hairstyle or something? Yeah, yeah. I've got older. <laughs> I say, I, I've got, I, 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 You look different than you used to. I remember when I used to see you, used to take that, he used to take that stuff and plaster it all down. I have, I, I've been sick, you see. I, I had a kidney transplant and the donor turned out to be a bedwetter. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, I, can I tell you how sick? You're not going to let me get out of here. No right? way in the world. I've got, a, I've got a, a, a foster child, you know, in Indonesia. And she's a girl. And six months ago, my wife sent her my photograph. And now the kid sends me $10 a month. <laughs> Tell me, 
I, I want to hear your favorite. I want to hear your favorite stories. By the way, you're wrapping this up. I thank you for coming. And by the way, I just want to say to each one of you publicly, Tim, uh, how many years you've been with me now? Uh, uh, I think yeah. six now. Yeah. Six now. Yeah. And I want to thank you publicly for all you've My done. Pleasure. You're just you've been terrific, mate, and a good a great support for me. Paul, we only discovered you this year. Mm. You I've known since uh, the year one. I think I knew you before <laughs> God or something, didn't I? Is that before we went to school? There was no such thing as history. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Anyway, and and it's really nice to see you. How about your three favorite stories? Who wants to go first? Whoever can. can I, I, go my favorite story is like being perverse Irish is a joke that never gets a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> he goes out the wharf. He said, I want to speak to Charlie. He said, he's not here. He said, where is he? He said, he's gone for a bale of cotton. He comes back the next day. I want to speak to Charlie. He said, he's not here. He said, where is he? He said, he's gone for a bale of cotton. 14 days, same thing. He's gone for a bale of cotton. 21st day, he comes back. He said, I want to speak to Charlie. He said, he's not here. He said, where is he? He said, he's dead. <laughs> said, it's getting funnier now. <laughs> he said, you're kidding me. No, he said, he's dead. He's up in the cemetery. And he goes up to the cemetery, and there's the tombstone. <laughs> and you will fall about it, this. <laughs> in memory of Charlie. Gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> True story. Do you believe it already? I'm on the beach, right? Lying there, minding my own business, bucket and spade, you know, chicken fat on the body, send to the sun, get over here. Lying there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit pale. My wife big describes guy. him as an anemic milk bottle. The big guy. Is he finished? Yeah. Big guy is walking along the beach. You know the ones, muscles on his dandruff. You know the ones? Yeah. Jockey shorts, packed lunch. Walking along, <laughs> walking along. <laughs> Walking along. <laughs> the Turak trendy behind him. Nothing on but the radio. You know what I mean? And I'm lying there and he's walked up and he's kicked the sand all over me. She started to laugh. I thought, I don't have to take this. <laughs> I moved. I get up and I... I don't get to laugh that line, but maybe I delivered it wrong. <laughs> I picked the bucket up and I moved down the beach. He followed me down, kicking the sand. She's laughing. I've moved. He's kicking the sand. She's, she's laughing. I've moved. Just then, the lifesaver arrived. Thank God for the lifesaver. You know the guy with the cap? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the lights are on and nobody's home. <laughs> he called me aside. He said, aside. He said, I could teach you. <laughs> I, that was good. I could teach you a karate punch, no matter what size they are, one punch, whack, straight down. He taught me the punch and went back to the beach the next day. He's still there. His name is Bob. Spelled backwards, Bob. And I, I lay down beside him. <laughs> lay down beside him, and they couldn't believe it. They jumped up, and the girl went, do it again, do it again. So he went, woof, kicked the sand all over me. She started to laugh, and I've gone, oh, no, hi. wow. Smacked her straight in the face. <laughs> My jerk. It's always, it's always, it's always tough to anchor, kid. But you worked at the Footlighters, where there's everybody well, doing everything. We'll try one. Uh, one of my favorites is about the uh, little old lady, midnight, right? She rings up her vet. And the vet answers the phone. She says, "My two little Scotties are stuck together." And he, said, he says, "Well, look, throw a bucket of cold water on them." She says, "I tried that." She said, "It didn't work." He says, uh, "He says, I'll tell you what." He said, "Pick them up, bring them over, and sit them next to the phone." He said, I'll ring you straight back. She said, will that separate them? He said, well, it just worked for me. Brian <laughs> Doyle, <laughs> Paul Martell, Tim Evans, three of the best in the business, and we thank you for coming in, all right? We'll be back. Don't go away. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Oh, Thanks. 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 What are you going to do now? Come here. I'm going to give him the thanking of his life. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Stand by. Right. Can I just have absolute quiet? It may just help a fraction. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. The, uh, 
The new James Bond action thriller, Never Say Never Again, has Sean Connery back in the 007 role. Uh, looking great and as suave and as tough as ever. Now, he's had plenty of stunning ladies playing opposite his Bond character in the past. Uh, uh, there were ladies like Ursula Andress and Honor Blackman and uh, uh, Jill St. John. But this time, his arch enemy is Fatima Blush, and she's played by the sultry Barbara Carrera. There is more action in it than you can shake a stick at, and I'm happy to say that we'll be showing you more of the action from Never Say Never Again on Monday's show. And we'll also have live in the studio that lady, Barbara Carrera, and James Bond himself, Sean Connery, okay? So I hope you'll be watching because I know you'll enjoy meeting him. That's Sean Connery, Barbara Carrera, our very special guests on Monday night, okay? So you'll be sure to enjoy it. Here's Jenny Andrews, this little girl that said, she's just about to put her own group together, she tells me. Good luck with it. She's going to be doing the Laura Branigan hit for us. How am I supposed to live without you? How about it? Jenny Andrews, singing it up the way it's supposed to be done.
Welcome to Don's Wheel, and tonight the major prize, the new Pulsar Geo hatchback sedan from Motorfast, featuring 5-speed manual overdrive gearbox, plus the brilliant 1.5-litre engine. The Pulsar is valued at $8,750 on the road, from Motorfast, your Nissan Datsun dealer in Commercial Road, South Yarra. Also tonight, a 16-day camping holiday for two with AAT. Travelling with the latest range of non-tear Armalite travel goods from airport luggage, the luggage that can really take it, and Bill King's Australian Adventure Tours. You could win this exquisite diamond ring from Theodore Fine Jewelry. Theodore has jewelry that is beautiful and affordable. You could also win $600 worth of quality Nilex garden care products, including the Nilex Shade House Kit from your nearest Mitre 10 store, plus $600 cash from Nilex. And from Snuggledoon Waterbeds, the superb queen-sized Princeton Waterbed, complete with quilt pillows, thermostatically controlled heater, and bedside tables, valued at $1,650. And now, here's Bert! I know so I... <laughs> Tonight's oh, yeah. the night. What's the night? Well, always be buzzing. All right, we're gonna, Bert and I are going to be singing at the wedding. We've got to get the wheel first. We need yeah, to get let's do it now. You eh? didn't take a letter last week. I didn't take a letter. We'll take a letter. Maria, Maria I send it to my wife. Right. Right. Let's forget the wheel. Let's go straight to the number, right? I'm, no, no, no. You've got to get somebody. You've got to get, get a contestant. Oh, really? I can't you want choose me to get one. one. I'll get no, one. No, I'll choose one. Yeah. Someone really attractive. Somebody in Don's age group. You might need someone who will get here quickly. Um. Who would you like, Don? Anyone there? If well, you... I'll tell you who I'd like to get. I'd like to get this bloke over here because uh, he, he, he's very funny. During the, during the, in the brown uh, yeah, sweater? Yeah, the monologue, he kept... Come, come over. Go. Come over. You're our hurry contestant. Up, hurry up, We haven't got a lot of time. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're all looking for somebody. All right, all right. I'm well, I'm well. What is your name? Julio. Julio what? Venditti. Uh, Julio. Julio. Venditti. Julio Venditti. Yeah, introduce us, Don. Introduce us. This huh? is Bertroni yeah, Nutroni. Yeah, Julio, how do you do? How do you, how do? You do? Nice how do you to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you, Julio. Very nice to meet you. Julio, Julio. Julio, very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Don Lane, I'm Bert Nutroni. How do you do? Nice to meet you. How do you do? How do you do? Very nice. It's good to see you. I, I, yes, I wait for you, I, yes. Eight years you wait for me. Yeah, Where were you waiting? <laughs> no, now, now I come in, I see you. Oh, you mean eight years you waited to get into the yeah, studio? Yeah. It's a long line. Yeah, long, long line out there. <laughs> Takes years. <laughs> right down Swan Street it goes. Yeah, yeah. But how long, it, uh, how, you, and you've waited eight years to come in and see the show? Yeah, my, my wife. You got in just in time, yeah. didn't you, eh? Yeah, you like to talk to my wife. Would I like to, what, with your wife? Yeah, I would. <laughs> okay, well, fine. Well, no, no, I've no, got no, to no, be home by 12 o'clock. No, come up, you've got to stay there. What's your name? What number you want? What's your number? Yes. Cinco, cuatro, uno, 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 to the casino. You know the you casino? You love it. Casino, you play yeah. bocce in the lawn outside. Right, yeah, it's nice. Right, right, you play in the morning, everything. I like. That's true. You'll have a wonderful oh, time. You, you, play have, tennis. you have won seven days of fun and games yeah. at the Launceston, or Launceston, Federal Country Club for two. You'll fly first class with TAA. Your holiday includes a luxury suite, breakfast, dinner, and the spectacular new show, Lucky Star. That's not the man who's saying that's the name of the uh, Joe. Joe. Plus $100 in chips. You like in chips? chips? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to get some good and collective. <laughs> this fabulous prize is worth over $1,500, and it comes to you with the compliments of Federal Pacific. And Julia, just be a little bit careful with room service, because they're hard to understand. They've got a lot of foreigners working yeah. there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what's the... <laughs> Are you all right, mate? How long do you live in Australia, Julia? Uh, Fifteen years. Fifteen years, and eight, and eight of those you've been waiting to get in here, right? <laughs> What a wonderful experience that must be. <laughs> when you first saw the Don Lane show on television, what did you think? Oh, I think very good. Uh, like, uh, 
Do you have any message in Italian, perhaps, for our powers that be? You might be able to save the show for us. Say it in Italian. Talk to the Italian community. Yes. Tell them, come in and make them an yeah, offer they can't refuse. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you like that? Some guy walking in and say, uh, listen, Packer, I want to talk to you. <laughs> a message in don't, Italian for me. Message don't, in Italian. Don't, don't, I started very good for me. I started, I've been done the line. No, in Italian. I don't want to hear talking English. Say it in Italian. Say it in Italian. Say it in Italian. Say it in Italian. Don't, I start, um, I'm a new you know, in Australia. I'll translate. You'll correct them, yeah. yeah. Don, what, Don, what's, Don. I've known that we, you know, in Australia, but he's done a very good job in Australia. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Bert. 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 I started start very good. No, but in Italian though. Bert. Yeah. Bert. 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 That's right. Good. Okay. Nice. Right. What famous Australian sporting event takes place on the first Tuesday in November? Bert. 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 No. no, no, no. no. <laughs> me. Huh? First me. November. November. No. Yes. The first. Yes. What event clue. takes the first Tuesday? Rowie. 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 Great Keppel Island holiday for two. Your TAA will fly you there and back to enjoy one week at Great Keppel Island, a great place to get wrecked. What about the new Action Rocker reclining chairs made under license by Moran of Melbourne? The chairs are designed for maximum comfort and ease of operation, each leather chair worth $1,000. You could also win a famous name video cassette recorder from the terrific range of entertainment equipment at Radio Rentals. On the wheel from Freedom Camping, the Freedom Boeing Family Tent, the Freedom Folding Table and four chairettes, plus all the essential Freedom accessories to make your camping holiday one to remember. Great prizes on Don's Wheel. And right after this break, Don and Bert will be back to bring the show to a fitting finale. Here we go. Okay, Very quickly. Name out of the barrel, and, right and then the song. For some buddies. It's from uh, Gypsy, a, isn't it? Yeah. This from is a very, very good duet. I've done this with some, some this other This is Kim Mangan, nice and fast because we're against time. Kim Mangan of a box number in Petersham in New South Wales. It's just a, a, you doing a number with me. Uh, you've been Hand asking mics. to do a duet. You don't realize we've never sung a duet. Not officially. We've done a couple of numbers, bad lib, but never an official duet. Look, I'm sorry. Excuse me, boys. Yes. Peter Smith here in the booth. Right. Yeah. I have been told by the executive producer that the song is not to go ahead tonight. Under any circumstances, there will be no performance tonight. Sorry to break this news to you on air, but that's the way it is. You're going for the record, Pete. That, that took you 15 seconds to say something which could have taken five... Is that from Peter Feynman? No, it's from... Higher than Peter Feynman. No one's higher than Peter Feynman. <laughs> Especially now. Hey, baby, how's it going? You all right? Yeah, nice really, it's it. not really cut, though, is it? Huh? It's not really cut. They cut the duet. Hang on a second. I'm talking to Steve. Steve's a friend of mine. It's not, it's not really cut, is it? Sorry, Bert, yes. Is it really cut? Yes, out of time. The number is cut because why? No out time. Out of time, I'm afraid. Can Peter oh, I, think that, I think the thing with you and Graham ran a little long. Yeah. Well, would you tell Peter Feynman for me, I want to see him in his office after the show. Certainly. And I'll explain to him where the office is. You go straight up the corridor and you make a right just near the... Oh, Graham, we'll still do it. Off you go. Come on. No, I can't. Oh, Graham, please. No, I'm sorry, Bert, I'm sorry. Now I've got to really use the power that's been bestowed on me tonight. You cannot do the song. Partners and pals will always be I'm sorry, we are going to a commercial break. No, I'm sorry, boys. Hey, Will! Thanks very much for joining us tonight. We'd like to remind you on our next show, Sean Connery, Barbara Carrera, the two stars of the new James Bond movie, Never Say Never Again. Of course, Sean Connery, one of the biggest names in motion pictures. Thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, we hope we'll see you on Monday night. In the meantime, good night. 
We love your faces. Take it easy. We'll say we said somebody's friend, brothers and cousins. Stay at Irvin Rockman's Regency Hotel in Melbourne. 